Mattel finally releases the Keeper of the Castle. Here's your look at the Mattel Master Universe Origins Sorceress, Heroic Guardian of Castle Grayskull. Imbued with magical abilities from the Pool of Power, the wise sorceress watches over Eternia when it needs He-Man for protection. Starting first with Sorceress, let's first figure out how tall the figure stands. To do that, I'm going to grab my ruler, I'm going to put it right to the very top of her head, and the figure stands at around 5 and 3 quarters of an inch tall, or 14 and a half centimeters tall. Then we can bring in a couple of other Master Universe Origins figures for some comparisons. Probably the comparison I'm sure you guys would want to see the most is the Sorceress compared next to the Sorceress that we got included with Castle Grayskull. I can't speak for everybody, but I know I certainly was disappointed the fact that the Castle Grayskull Sorceress wasn't the more traditional color scheme that we're getting with the Singular release. Instead, we kind of got this weird-looking white Sorceress, which was a fine figure, but it really wasn't the Sorceress that I wanted to have in my collection. Speaking of collections, let's bring in some of the other He-Man figures. Here she is next to He-Man himself. Here she is next to the Eternian Goddess, the recolor of Tila. Here she is next to Prince Adam. Uh, we can also bring in for other female figures. Here she is next to Evil Lynn, the original Evil Lynn with the sickly white, uh, yellow colors. And here she is also ne next to Orko, just for no other reason than just to bring Orko in for comparisons. Because the Sorceress is part of the same wave as the other two figures that we recently had a look at, the comic appearance Stratos and the Jitsu, of course is going to come include with the same mini comic. That comic in question, by the way, is the Challenge of Jitsu. I don't know if Mattel used a little less glue or my ability to cut out the comics to become a little bit better, but I've noticed that the comic here is pretty pristine. In fact, every subsequent review I've done of this wave so far, the comic has come out a little bit better. I mean, not that I would be wanting to sell the comic, but if I did, I think this would almost be near good, almost almost near mint, although there's a little bit of fraying down below here. But it's the Challenge of Jitsu, and then advertised on the back as the other figures that make up this wave. We have already done Jitsu, and previous to that, we also did the comic appearance of Stratos. We still have to look at Buzz Off. I'm not telling you guys to leave the premiere. Please stay and enjoy yourself some sandwiches. Um, of course, we are going to be having a look at Sorcerers and advertised once again on either side is, I believe, He-Man version 2 and Skeletor version 2. He-Man with the notably shorter hair, Skeletor with not that weird surprised look on his face. As for the inside of the comic, once again, because I ordered this online from a U.S. seller, I'm actually getting myself actual uh, writing on the inside. So I can fi find out what's going on instead of just using my imagination. I mean, I, again, I would like to know why Jitsu is slapping this, this lion silly. It says, looks like we just found our problem. And he says, hi, yeah. Apparently that's all you have to do to deal with a really disgruntled lion. But it's a nice looking comic. I mean, it's pretty short of a read. It's only about four pages or so in length. You can see there's Jitsu down below battling both He-Man Stratos. Strange again that Stratos is gray here instead of flesh colored. But anyways, a nice little mini comic. And again, I'm going to hold on to this one unless the one that comes included with Buzz Off is a lot better. I'm not telling you guys again to leave the video. To uh, also come included with the Sorceress here, she comes included with her staff. Now the staff, I'm going to bring in the one that came included with the one that was with Castle Grayskull. Uh, I'm really having a tough time to try to see if there's a difference between the two. Uh, there's a little bit of... Ah, there it was. I thought it was just a little bit of paint on the top of mine. Um, they, they don't look like they're any bit different from one another. But I can't say that one is brighter than the other. One is more whiter than the other. If I did, it would only be probably my eyes playing tricks on me. But again, you get the exact same staff as the one that comes included with Castle Grayskull. So, I mean, really, you could use, I mean, I guess you could use either one of them, or obviously that we have two sorcerers, you could easily have two sorcerers display with their two corresponding staffs. Speaking of which, though, you can take the staff and fit it into her hand. It fits in this case in both hands, because she does have gripping hands on both sides. Probably will find myself displaying her. And I think when it comes to displaying this sorceress, no offense to the other sorceress that we got earlier, but this is the one that's going to be going and sitting inside Castle Grayskull. The other sorcerers, once again, we can bring in. Now, again, this was a fine figure, but I think it was a bit of a tease on Mattel's part. We all knew the sorcerer that we got included with Castle Grayskull wasn't going to be the one that they were going to permanently release only one and then be done. 
We knew sooner or later we were going to get this sorceress. So it's a bit unfair, unfortunately, that the one that we got in Clue with Castle Grayskull had to be this one here. It was a fine figure. I mean, there was nothing really wrong with that sorceress. I did kind of like the way that she had these translucent wings. But again, like the all white color really didn't work for me, at least for displaying uh, the definitive sorceress on my display. I much prefer this one instead. Was it a bit cheap on Mattel's part to simply not just include this sorceress with the original Castle of Grayskull? I might lean to maybe saying yes. I mean, easily this figure could be included with that castle and called it a day. But instead, they sort of double dipped the figure, giving us an inferior looking sorceress, knowing that sooner or later they were going to release the singular and every collector out there, including myself, would want to track this one down. And that's basically what we've done. Sorceress, I think, is one of the more higher ticketed figures from this wave. I can certainly understand why. I mean, again, people want to get the more classic colors of their sorceress. Now, this one does have the wings that do open and close, or hinge out, I should say, or close up. So you sort of can have it looking like more of a cape, or again, there's little hinges. The hinges, at least to their credit, although they're a little obnoxiously silver, and the way they've tapped them in place, at least they're concealed behind her, her eagle headdress. So you don't see it as much here, but the hinges allow the wings to hinge out this way. I probably will just find myself displaying her with the wings out myself. At some point, I would like to see them release maybe the Eagle of Sorceress. That would be a nice included as well. A nice, maybe like an accessory pack that they could release down the road. Uh, but she does have really nice looking colors. Starting first, look at her face sculpt. I guess probably would be helpful maybe to bring in the other Sorceress. I think I just dropped Jitsu off in the far corner. Uh, the colors are a lot more subtle on the original Sorceress. Much more warmer tones, I think, on the newer one that we get released here. The eyes are about the same, although now that I'm seeing the one with the single Sorceress release, I find like the eyes, I didn't maybe notice it before, like slightly sloppy in the top corner there. You can probably see it for yourself. But yeah, this one here that got released with Castle Grayskull is a much fairer looking skinned uh, Sorceress, whereas I feel like the colors on this one are so much nicer. Of course, you've got the eagle uh, headdress that she wears on top there, painted pretty decently, I have to say. Yeah, there's really nothing I would have changed to the figure, like at least from a head sculpt standpoint. The colors are nice and vibrant. Colors are at least more familiar for me. And this is, again, like the colors that I would want to have Sorcerers have be released in the in the first place. But again, that wasn't the case. Looking at the figure's articulation, starting first with her head sculpt, it's going to be a little bit more limited just by the nature of, well, I mean, you can sort of see how much is being hindered here. The headdress piece having to drape over top of her wings or like that already limits what you can do with the head. I mean, you really can't move it back and forth at all. You can move it up just a little bit and just down a little bit, but that's it. That's about it. All you can really get. I guess technically you could count the wings as part, being part of her articulation. Those can hinge again to fold up or again, if you want to extend them out. As for her arms, you can get a, easily a 90 degree angle bend. You can take those arms as well and rotate them all the way around, but yeah, for obvious reasons you're not going to be able to get a full rotation from those arms she does have a single hinge in the elbow so you can rotate the arm back and forth this way and you can also take the hands and rotate them independently all the way around with a hinge joint right there as well allowing the hands to hinge back and forth as well waist swivels on sorcerers then for the legs the legs split out on a ball joint you can bring the legs forward and back a bend at the knee which is a little tighter on this figure i have to say and something also you got to be aware of as well is making sure I didn't notice it on this one. I should have saw it and spotted it before I started this review. I was bending this knee fine and good. I didn't realize actually that this knee was rotated the wrong way. That's something, again, you will want to be careful of when taking the figures out of their pa packaging. Just making sure that the hinge joint is facing the right direction. Because if not, you're putting pressure against a joint that really is never meant to be bending. And as a result of that, you're going to break the leg right off. But yeah, she does have a bend at the knee. It rotates the lower leg. She does also have the boots being as separate pieces, also allow the legs to rotate, or the tops of the boots to rotate. Uh, unfortunately, like the paint doesn't get completely finished all the way to the top of the fur. At least on mine, you can see, yeah, the paint probably could have gone just a little bit higher up. Whoever was painting it probably missed this in the shop. And then for the feet, you can bring the feet up and down this way. And the figure also does have ankle pivot as well. So again, it's a really nice looking sorceress. It is really the sorceress I feel we should have got right from day one. Just get the staff into her hand, put her here on display. And for one last comparison as well. Sorry, sorry. Just bring the staff out of the way of her face. There we go. And for one last comparison, let's get the sorceress that came in clue with Castle Grayskill. Bend her arm, get the staff also in her hand. 
There we go. And put her also right next to Sorceress. Um, unfortunately, though, just the resulting of now getting, I feel, the better looking Sorceress, I'm now sort of perplexed as to what I'm going to do with the original one. I mean, again, for what she was at the time she was released with Castle Grayskull, which really, when you think about it, really wasn't that long ago. It's a nice looking one, but it's not the Sorcerer I would have wanted. Instead of getting this one with Castle Grayskull, I wish all the while we would have gotten this one instead, so we didn't have to buy the figure separately. Yeah, I'll admit it. Mattel was cheap when it came to the release here of Sorceress. The company knew that any person that picked up Castle Grayskull was disappointed with the Sorceress that came included with that playset and still would have forked over the bucks to pick up a singular release of Sorceress. It allowed the company to do a double dip because they knew everybody would still be interested in getting Castle Grayskull and everybody would be getting a Sorceress. To really put the two together, it would alienate the purchase of one extra figure. I mean, because if you flipped it around the other way, if we had looked at the scenario like this Sorceress was coming include with the Castle Grayskull right from the very beginning, who would have really picked up the White Sorceress as a standalone figure? I think maybe, if anything, she probably would be even more of a peg warmer than the comic appearance Stratos. On second thought, I don't think anybody's worse than the comic appearance Stratos. Sorry, Stratos. He's just off to the side listening to me. But yeah, this is going to be the Sorceress I'm going to have on display with Castle Grayskull. It's going to be resulting now in another Sorceress that I'm just not going to put on display. The other one it was nice. It did have the nice translucent wings, and the white color scheme was pretty cool. But this is the one I really want to have displayed with Castle Grayskull. Maybe, if anything, I'll probably just give that Sorceress to my daughter and let her play with that one. But what do you guys think of Sorceress here? Was it a cheap thing, a cheap move on Mattel's part to release this as a singular figure, knowing everybody who would be interested in this line would be picking up Castle Grayskull with whatever figure was included with it anyways? Let me know down below in the comments section. And hey now, if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn as well that bell notification. It may not seem like it's a crucial part, but it certainly helps you get those friendly reminders of when new videos are going to be popping up. And it certainly as well, if you could believe it, helps the channels out too. If you are doing a tally of all the figures that we've looked at so far from this wave, the only figure still left to cover off is Buzz Off. Again, I'm not telling you guys to leave. But yeah, the review of Buzz Off will be coming right around the corner. So again, keep your peepers peeled to this channel. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.